It is not the Capitol or any monument that's the yardstick for how high you can build in Washington, D.C. For that, it comes down to the Height Act, and changing that, D.C. Mayor Muriel Bowser says, is the key to more housing development. But to understand the law means a little history lesson, courtesy of Deputy Mayor John Falcicchio. So, John, what is the Height Act? Yeah, so the Height Act actually was put in place at the end of the 19th century. Uh, and it was really about uh, the ability to fight fires in a residential setting. Uh, so that was kind of the genesis of it. Uh, and it was updated in 1910, uh, and that's the last time it's been updated. Yeah. Uh, so it really says that uh, buildings can only be of a certain height. In downtown, uh, it's about 130 feet. Uh, and then in other parts of the city, it's limited to 90 feet. And then just depending on the local zoning, mm -hmm. it could be even smaller than that. Bowser's administration has already pushed the idea of converting open office space vacant before, during, and after COVID into housing. But some of the highest buildings are actually along one of the city's most famous corridors already. The push means taking that standard and applying it across the district. If we're here on Pennsylvania Avenue, you're yep. looking at one side of the street versus the other. Yep. It's, it really only affects one side here. Yeah, it only affects this one side, which this side is 160 feet at maximum mm -hmm. and if you go one block north or off of pennsylvania avenue then you'll see that it's only 130 feet okay to the naked eye you don't even know the difference and so we think by changing a bit in that 130 feet to 160 feet mm -hmm. you really wouldn't ruin that view shed that people prize but for many people who already live in dc who have spent their entire lives here it's not so much about finding a brand new place it's about being able to afford their current home. So the mayor's reasoning here? If you increase the housing stock, it's a supply and demand issue. The more supply there is, it helps meet the demand. Uh, so there was a study by Howard University. Uh, it said between 2000 and 2018, DC produced about 40,000 units of housing. Uh, and when Mayor Bowser in 2019 said, we want to create 36,000 units of housing, what they analyzed it would do is be able to keep rent prices 5.5% less because of the new production than they would be without that production. So for us, by adding more supply, you help meet the demand of a growing city. So again, what, whatever you decide, whatever's decided here has to be affirmed by down the street there. Uh, what's the likelihood that we're gonna see the people there, the people who are elected from states across the country, weighing in on something that would affect the people of Washington, D.C.? What's the chances of that passing? Well, we actually see them do it quite often. Uh, and we do it a lot of times to see those uh, be a little bit more restrictive on some of our activity. Yeah. Uh, but we think actually that by putting folks forward the case, by going to the uh, Congress Unified, uh, that we can actually push them uh, to move forward. We've actually had success in Republican administrations and we've had success in Democratic uh, administrations on big uh, projects like getting uh, land for the district. So one of the things is we can't just build more land, but what we could do is get more height.